The kidneys are a pair of organs that primarily act to filter the blood and excrete waste products such as urea and uric acid, along with homeostatic functions such as maintaining a balance of electrolytes and ensuring blood pH remains within normal limits. The kidneys also release hormones such as renin to regulate blood pressure, erythropoietin to stimulate red blood cell production from the bone marrow, and calcitriol, the activated form of vitamin D. If we take a look at the general structure of the urinary system, we can see that the kidneys are supplied by the renal arteries, which directly branch from the abdominal aorta. The kidneys receive approximately 20% of the cardiac output, and therefore they receive around one litre of blood every minute. We'll come back to the blood supply through the kidney a little later. Waste products filtered out of the blood leave the kidney as urine, which then feeds down the ureters to reach the bladder. The bladder acts as a storage reservoir for urine. When full, urine passes from the bladder to the outside world via the urethra. Let's take a closer look at the kidney and its internal anatomy. The kidney has a very tough fibrous outer layer, which is called the capsule, and it helps to maintain the structure and protect the kidneys from trauma. Looking inwards, we can see the kidney has two regions, the outer region, called the cortex, and an inner region, called the medulla. The medulla is split into a number of sections called renal pyramids. The cortex is a smooth layer that has projections, called cortical columns, and these descend down between the renal pyramids. Looking closer in, we can see the functional unit of the kidney, which is called the nephron. There are tens of thousands of nephrons inside each kidney. Here we can see the main components of the nephron. We have the Bowman's capsule, the proximal tubuli, the loop of Henle, which is further subdivided into the descending limb and the ascending limb, and there's also the distal convoluted tubuli and the collecting duct. We can see that most of the nephron is found within the cortex, only dipping down into the medulla for the loop of Henle and the collecting ducts. Multiple nephrons drain into a single collecting duct. As these collecting ducts dive through the renal pyramids, adjacent collecting ducts fuse together and eventually they form the minor calyx. And as you can see, there is one minor calyx per renal pyramid. The minor calyces then converge with each other to form a major calyx. Further convergence of these major calyces takes us to the renal pelvis. From the renal pelvis, the waste filtrate leaves the kidney as urine and continues down the ureter towards the bladder. Let's take a look at the blood supply through the kidney. As mentioned earlier, the kidneys receive blood from the renal arteries, which branch from the abdominal aorta. The renal arteries enter the kidneys and supply different segments of the kidneys via segmental arteries. These segmental arteries further branch into interloba vessels. From here, they divide into arcuate arteries, and they are called arcuate as they are arch-shaped. These arcuate arteries further divide into even smaller interlobular arteries. These interlobular arteries eventually form tiny clumps of capillaries. These small clumps of capillaries form something called a glomeruli. Blood enters a glomerulus from the interlobular artery via an afferent arteriole, and blood leaves the glomerulus via the efferent arteriole. If we take a look at the bigger picture, we can see that the glomerulus itself is encased by the Bowman's capsule, which if we remember is part of the nephron. Together, the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus are called the renal corpuscle. Blood leaving the glomerulus via the efferent arteriole begins to wind itself around the nephron. Vessels coating the proximal tubuli and the distal convoluted tubuli are called peritubular capillaries, whilst the vessels that dive into the medulla and coat the loop of Henle are called the vas erecta. From here, blood now enters the venous vasculature and drains from the kidneys in the reverse order of vessels it used to enter. 
In other words, blood drains from the interlobular vein into the arch-shaped arcuate veins. From here, blood passes into the interlobar veins in which it passes between the renal pyramids. From the interlobar veins, blood continues into the segmental veins, which finally leaves the kidney as the renal vein. The renal vein drains directly into the inferior vena cava, where it is returned back to the heart. The area at which the renal artery enters the kidney and where the renal vein exits the kidney is called the hilum.